Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Carrie Grady Vincent, and I'm the Senior Manager of Scientific and Clinical Programs at Osteoporosis Canada. I will be your moderator for today's webinar, Dance Ballet for Bone Health, brought to you by Osteoporosis Canada and Canada's National Ballet School. Before we begin, Osteoporosis Canada acknowledges the land that our offices, located in Toronto, are on is the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples. And it's now home to many diverse First Nations, including the Inuit and the Métis. We also acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. Today's virtual adult ballet class is a great way to learn the basics of ballet and to discover the joy of dance. At Osteoporosis Canada, we educate Canadians, excuse me, about bone health, including healthcare professionals and their clients. We are excited about today's presentation and we'll provide some general information about dance and bone health before the ballet instructions. <clears throat> Excuse me. This presentation will provide general information about ballet and exercise. It is not intended as individualized health or fitness advice. If you have questions about exercise, please consult a physician. Before we begin, make sure you have your speakers turned up fully so that you can hear the presenters and instructor clearly. I would now like to ask Osteoporosis Canada's president and CEO, Dr. Fumita Jiwa, to say a few words. Fumita? Thank you, Carrie. Uh, welcome, everybody. <clears throat> it's so lovely to see so many people on for this very important class. Uh, we have people not only in Canada, but uh, many international people as well. So good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. Um, Osteoporosis Canada is very proud to partner with Canada's National Ballet School to provide our first Ballet for Bone Health webinar. Um, this idea germinated at the board level of Osteoporosis Canada with one of our board members, Petra Newton, who has really driven this partnership and uh, seen it through to fruition. So we're very excited about this webinar. We hope that you're able to participate. Uh, if not, it will be archived for viewing later. Our focus is really on balance and flexibility. Um, so I invite you to fully engage in, in the next hour. Um, and thank you once again for joining us. I'll send it back to Carrie. Okay, great. Thank you, Famita. It is now my pleasure to introduce our speakers and instructor. Dr. Caitlin MacArthur is an assistant professor in the School of Physiotherapy at Dalhousie University and works to improve mobility and quality of life of clinically complex older adults. And she is a lead instructor of the continuing education course Bone Fit, hosted by Osteoporosis Canada, which teaches exercise professionals about safe movements physical activity and exercise for people with osteoporosis. She is also a, an active member of our Scientific Advisory Council. Dr. Rachel Barr is the Director of Research and Health at Canada's National Ballet School. She completed her PhD in psychology at Toronto Metropolitan University and her postdoc fellowship at Trent University. As a dance artist, she has been part of the multidisciplinary team that developed NBS's approach to dance programming for older adults. As a researcher, she has been involved in several projects investigating how and why older adults can benefit from accessible dance innovations, including older adults living with Parkinson's disease and dementia. And our instructor today is Robert McCollum, or as many know him, Ballet Bob, who trained in New York City and went on to dance professionally in both the US and Canada. Acclaimed for his expertise in teaching adults, Robert holds a Cicchetti Associate Teaching Qualification and is a graduate of Canada's National Ballet School Teacher Training Program. 
Mr. McCollum is currently the coordinator of the NBS Adult Ballet Program and also teaches for the professional program at the School of Toronto Dance Theatre, teacher seminar at NBS and George Brown Theatre School. So let's get started and let's welcome Dr. Caitlin MacArthur. Caitlin. All right, thank you so much for uh, having me here today to talk a little bit about exercise and osteoporosis before we jump into the ballet class. So I'm just going to cover kind of the basics of exercise for bone health and how, you know, ballet can fit into that, that puzzle of, of all the exercise types we should be doing. So really the goal of any type of exercise for people living with osteoporosis is to prevent fractures. And we can do this via three main ways. So we want to try to prevent falls. We want to move safely and we may be able to prevent further bone loss, depending on the type of exercise we do and where we are in our journey with osteoporosis and in, in our own life course as well. So for fall prevention, we can think about our mobility, balance, uh, muscle strength and postural alignment. For safe movement, this is really thinking about protecting our spine because that's a place where we often experience fractures with osteoporosis. We especially wanna think about the back muscles that hold us upright, they're called back extensors, and stretching any muscles that might restrict how we move. So things that kind of prevent us from moving well. Um, and then thinking about the type of exercise we do in terms of prevention of further bone loss. So as I mentioned, when, when we think about exercise, uh, there's multiple types of exercise we want to be doing. So first, we want to make sure that we're doing strength training two to three times per week. This is going to be, you know, a really effective way of preventing further bone loss. For uh, thinking about falls prevention, balance training is going to be really, really important. And we want to try to do that daily for 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, I also mentioned thinking about our spine. So we wanna use spine sparing movements. Uh, I'll talk about what those mean in just a moment. Um, but we also wanna think about training our back muscles that hold us upright and in a nice uh, aligned posture or a nice upright posture. Um, we also wanna do that daily too. And then lastly, aerobic exercise can certainly be part of the mix as well. This we're aiming for five or more days per week in, th uh, in bouts of 30 minutes. And usually we wanna try and do weight bearing aerobic activity like walking um, and those types of activities. So where does you know dance and ballet kind of fit into this story? Um, so we can think about dance. Um, it often includes balance exercises such as um, it, Today, you'll have the opportunity to practice standing on one foot, um, and that is a form of a balance exercise. Dance also helps us remind us about good posture, um, which we want to do daily. Um, but we also want to think that some of the positions that we might do in, in a dance class could be risky. So I'll talk about how we can um, modify those in a moment. So we don't want to forget about the other two pieces of the puzzle, too. So making sure that we do um, incorporate strength training and aerobic training as well. So I talked a little bit about spine sparing, and these are the, the movements that we want to try to limit. So it's not that we can't ever do them. We just want to try to limit the number of times that we do them. Um, and we're when we're talking about these movements, we're talking about really with our spine, so with our back. So we won't, don't want to do forward bending, slouching, twisting, side bends, or any combination of those things. And there's some qualifiers. So like I said, it's not that you don't ever want to bend forward. It's that you want to uh, try not to do it repeatedly or sustained. So that means doing it over and over or holding it for a long period of time. You don't want to do it weighted. So that's holding something heavy while you do that. Um, you don't want to do it end range, so going as far as you possibly can, or rapid or forceful. So that's, you know, moving really quickly or with like a lot of effort behind what you're doing. So those are the, the types of spine movements we want to try to modify. There's lots of different ways you can modify them. These are some examples. So the first is a hip hinge, um, which means that you bend at your spine rather than, sorry, you bend at your hips rather than at your spine. I said that backwards. Um, but you can see in this picture over here, this person, uh, their spine is staying nice and long and to you know, bend down and pick up these grocery bags, they're bending at their hip rather than through their spine. You can also do things like moving your feet to turn rather than rotating through your spine, um, minimizing the amount of times that you have to lift or lower things to or from the floor. 
thinking about going slow, controlled, not to the end of the range of motion, so not as far as you can go. If you have to carry heavy things, you want to try to balance those things on either side of your body. If you are going to bend forward, you can always support your trunk. So that means like putting your hand out on a chair or even on your own leg so that you're you're supporting your your the top half of your body while you're bending forward. And then holding weight close to your body is also really important as well. So how does all of this uh, kind of relate to today's ba ballet class? These are just some tips to keep you safe and to think about that spine sparing. So first you wanna make sure that you find a nice stable object to use as a balance support or a bar to work with. Um, so this could be being close to a counter, wall, or a sturdy chair. And you'll notice that I've uh, underlined, uh, italicized and made bold sturdy chair. So make sure that it is sturdy. It's not gonna fall over or collapse on you. You wanna remove any tripping hazards around you. So these are things like area rugs, shoes on the floor, pets. I know, you know, we're, we're often at home nowadays and pets can certainly get under our feet um, because we don't want to fall while we're doing this class. Wear good non-slip footwear or bare feet. Um, this will help prevent any slips or, you know, falls while we're doing the exercises. There are two options here that you could stand or sit. If you can stand, it's it's going to be more beneficial for you to do the, the class standing. It's a better balance challenge and it's better for your spine because it keeps you in a nice upright position. But if you do need to sit, there is that option as well. Just make sure that you're sitting as tall as possible, that you're not slouching throughout the class and you want to take a standing break halfway through. Last couple tips here, um, there is uh, an exercise where you're going to be doing a side bend um, and Ballet Bob does a really great job of reminding you of this, but I just want to remind you again, you really wanna lift up, so extend through your spine before you bend over sideways and don't bend all the way. So only bend about you know a quarter to half of the way over rather than bending as far as you possibly can sideways. When you're lifting your leg out in front of you, make sure again that you're lengthening through your spine, especially if you are sitting. So make sure that you're really lifting up. And when you get to those center exercises kind of halfway through towards the end, just make sure that you've got something close to you so that if you do lo lose your balance, you can grab onto it. Again, a wall, a counter, a sturdy chair. And remember lastly that balance exercises and posture within dance classes are one piece of that big exercise pile uh, puzzle. Don't forget to do your strength and, and aerobic training too. Um, if you're not sure where to start, a couple tips for you. Uh, you could find someone who is bone fit trained. Um, so health and fitness, fitness professionals around you. Um, we have a locator map on the website so you can see who's trained you know, um, close to you, or you can call the number here and they can help you find somebody who's trained. Um, and they can give you lots of tips about exercise if you're not sure where to start. There's also a video series on Osteoporosis Canada's website that you can check out um, that that walks you through some, some exercises um, and there's nice short videos. So they give you some, some tips on where you can start with those other pieces of the puzzle. All right, I'm gonna throw it back to Carrie. Thank you very much. That was great, Caitlin. Thank you for all those tips. I'm sure that they'll be really helpful. Um, now it is my pleasure to turn things over to Dr. Rachel Barr. Rachel? Thanks, Carrie. So it, it, it's my pleasure uh, to be here uh, on behalf of Canada's National Ballet School at this Osteoporosis Canada webinar. Um, I just wanted to share a little bit about uh, Canada's National Ballet School if you're not familiar. So uh, the school NBS has uh, been teaching dance uh, for over 60 years um, to the country. Um, we're mostly known for our professional uh, program where we train the next generation um, of uh, talented uh, professionals that go out and um, uh, are spotlighted on stages around the world. Um, but we also have a very robust uh, recreational dance program and community dance programs um, that span across the, the, the lifespan, um, so from young children to older adults. Um, and in these programs, uh, we focus on different uh, aspects depending on the type of class, but really um, our, our goal, our hope is to create a, an accessible, joyful dance experience uh, for anybody who wants to have that. 
So I will add as well that a lot of the programs are now available uh, in virtually. Um, so if you're not in Toronto um, and you want to join a class, uh, we do have virtual offerings both for our adult uh, ballet program and um, for our, our older adult programs as well. Um, and you can find out more about those on our website. Now, a little bit about why we dance. Well, as a dancer, I know firsthand uh, the physical benefits, the emotional benefits, the social benefits, the spiritual benefits of being a dancer. Um, but I'm also very excited that uh, formal research has also begun to capture these many benefits in, in many different ways. Um, so we do actually uh, know through research as well that dance uh, can be very beneficial uh, to people across a lifespan, um, across those different um, uh, variables, physically, emotionally, socially. But the best way to really understand why I feel passionately and um, why, why we should all, why we should, sorry about that, um, why we should all be dancing um, is to actually experience it ourselves. And so I'm going to speak uh, just one more minute about uh, what you're going to about to, to join into. Um, so you're going to uh, dive into a, a gentle introductory adult ballet class with the wonderful uh, ballet Bob. Uh, you'll see that he's um, with a musician, but also with a, um, a fellow dance teacher who's in a seated uh, position. Uh, the idea of, of our dance programs uh, for the community are to um, make sure you feel the program is accessible in, in whatever way feels good to you. Uh, so you're invited to fully participate, you're invited to participate from a seated position, or to watch and listen, um, whatever feels um, right uh, for you. Um, while you're preparing, Caitlin did a great job of running through some of the considerations. Just if you happen to be uh, around uh, furniture or other people, just check that you have enough room to move your arms and stretch your legs and you're not going to crash into anyone or, or anything. Um, I know we're all in, 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 in diverse spaces when we join these webinars. And so um, with that, I'm now going to turn it over to the wonderful Bally Bob. And now let's get dancing. Hello everyone and welcome to your Canada's National Ballet School Intro to Ballet Experience. Yes, and I'm so fortunate to have Nicole with me as part of our demonstration and Rob, our pianist. Yeah, so, so exciting. Your first experience, but where there's several things we need to talk about. One is we are going to use turnout. And where does turnout happen? It happens at the tops of your legs. So your thigh bone, right at the very tip, has some muscles that wrap around to the back. They're called your deep outer rotators. And the great thing is once you've rotated the top of the leg out, you think like a lovely barbershop pole, it goes down and down towards your feet. And it's an everlasting movement through the legs. And then another thing we need to talk about, which is so great for your ballet training, but also for good active life, is what we call the plumb line. We try to organize our body through a line that goes from tip of head through the center ear through the shoulder joint, through the hip joint, yes? And then we have a slight shift forward, so our plumb line falls just in front of our ankle area. And notice my three body weights of the pelvis, thoracic, and head are in one alignment. And in ballet, we call that the plumb line. So, something to think about when you start every exercise. Yes? The other interesting thing is I like to talk about a magic sphere of energy. In dance, just below the navel in the center of the pelvis, you imagine there's a magic sphere and you 
lift it a little bit so that you are active in the pelvis so we can move those legs more freely. So let's start and remind yourself you can modify anything that we're doing. Remember, it's important to stay healthy. Yes? So I'm going to get behind the bar. And so our very first thing, so we're going to be in first position of the feet. So again, tops of the leg, your barbershop pole. Your favorite new toe joint, you probably didn't know you had one, is your second toe joint. And we're going to do something called the demi-plie. We go down, and that kneecap goes over the second toe joint alignment. And then we come up. Then we do it again. And come up. We do it again come up and we're going to do a little rise lifting the heels spread your toes out and then slowly come down yes and we'll repeat that again three times releve again like a duck's webbed foot spread the toes out come down then We'll take our right arm off. We'll turn our head 45 degrees. Now, we're going to do what's called a side bend. If you feel uncomfortable doing that, you can just stay in a beautiful extended lift. But if you want to try the side bend, like a Paris fountain, we go up first, over, return, a little rise, lower, arm down. Arm beautiful. Notice the lovely curved line. Turn 45 degrees to the right. Up and over. Here. Rise up. Lower. And arms up. And you notice I said Paris Fountain. In Toronto, we have the Parquet Fountain, which looks like this. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so you're thinking of a gorgeous Paris fountain where the jet goes far and wide. So, good luck, everybody. And. That juicy demi. Releve. Lower down. Demi. You're trying to make it nice and smooth and even. Rise up. Now with the right arm, we make a generous curve. Turn the head up and over. Return. Rise up. Lower. On. Turn the head to the right. Up and over. So your first ballet exercise. Our next one is called the tendu. And it's all about the articulation of your feet. And I'm just going to face this way for a moment so you can see my articulation. I'm going to start by lifting the heel, toes stay on the floor, point. Then I go down through the foot and here. Another articulation twice through. Trying to be very articulate with the foot. And then we're going to extend the right leg to the front, point to the floor, 
back up. Come in. Then massage along the floor. And in you come. And then we do the left foot. Yes? Then we have some tone work for our upper leg muscles. We're going to rise, lower down, a little demi-plie in parallel here. Rise up, lower down, here, down, yeah. Rise up. This time you're going to stay up. Flip your hand and lower down here and arms off. So let's give it a try. And Through the toes first, then the heel. Lift the heel first, then the toes. Whole leg to the front. Point to the floor. Touch it. Up. And then along the floor to point. Hold. And then we do the left, point, through the toes first, then the heel, up again, toes, extend the leg front, point to the floor, up, in. Massage along the floor to stay. In. And here we go. Releve up. Hold. Lower. Demi. Rise up again. Lower. Demi. Third time. Flip your hands, and we stay. Now, vive Clicquot grapes under your heels, and you squeeze fine champagne. Finish. Our next exercise that we're doing, it's called Degage. Yes? And we're going to do it in turnout again. So again, little reminder, tops of the legs, the barbershop pole, and so on. Like I said earlier, that second toe joint, very important. Because you're going to go out in the angle that the second toe joint is projecting. So more of a V line for people. Yes? This is also about empowerment of the foot. Yes? So we'll get a little bit mo stronger muscle action going. And I like to call this the dysfunctional exercise because, watch everybody, I hate the floor on the way out and I love it on the way in. So I hate and I push it away and come in. Yes? And we're going to do it four times with your right. And then we do four times with the left. We'll have a little bit of hold with it. Here. Yes? We'll do the right again. We'll do the left again. So remind yourself, with this exercise, you could also do it parallel. Yes? Shooting the leg out nice and strong. And then come in the same hate and love. Then I'm going to teach you something very interesting in balance. We have simultaneous action where you wake up joints and muscles together. So we do. 
demi, we go to a lovely rise, we hold, we go back to the demi, and then we just extend our legs. Then we repeat here, right to the rise, nice and strong, and back to the demi, and come up. And we repeat that four times. So, good luck. So start with your arms off. This is something we do in every class. We start in a lovely position with our arms on bas, with our palms facing each other. And out you go. And love the floor. Hate it and love it. Hate it, love it. Hate it, and other side. Right again. Hate and love. The height is not very much off the floor. And here we go. Demi. Up. Hold it. Back to Demi. Smooth. And extend. Demi again. Strong relevant. Back to your dummy right away. Again, and one. Up to hold. Stay. Dummy. One last time for strength. to Demi. That was great music, Rob. Thank you so much. Yes? Our next exercise, I thought I'd teach you one of the interesting movements in ballet called the retire. And now, this is very usually done in an adage fashion. And we do lots of shifting from our ankles. I came up with an image for my adults once when I was guest teaching out in the Maritime. I like to call it drunken sailor. So from your ankles, you have this image of just shifting versus shifting from your hips. So you're going to take the whole body as a unit from the ankle joint so we don't see any distortion. Yes? So what we're going to do is you're going to first experiment with the shifting. Shift left. Here. Back to center. Shift right. Here. Back to center. Shift. Here. And you have the feeling that you're headed again towards that second toe joint and the center of your foot. And back. Then we shift here. I start lifting the heel and bringing my toes in. Then I imagine my ankle. I'm a real fan of ice cream. Baskin Robbins, Jamocha Almond Fudge. My ankle is the ice cream. I lick it off. Go up as high as you can on your shin bone. Yes? Then we go out to that second position. Tondu. Come back in with weight on both legs. Then we shift to the right. Center of the foot. Heel. 
Lick the ice cream. Up you go. Out to the second. Back in. And wait on two legs. And like our degage exercise, this could also be done in a nice parallel. Yes, beautiful pickup just below the knee or as high as you can go on the side, then just extend it to the front and close. So you have two options. So, starting with our arms off, palms facing each other, and... <laughs> Shift to the left, back to center, shift to the right. So you're feeling that subtlety of movement from the ankle joint. To the right, back to center, shift to the left and stay, heel and toes up as high as you can go. Going to ask you to flip your hand for a moment. Leg, back, then your hands can go resume. Shift to the right. Heel first, lick. Flip to the back of the hand. Now, we're going to finish off our intro to ballet bar with the famous Grand Batman. So I've been, if you're at home, we're at our chair, and now we're going to do one hand on the chair. And now I'm going to move my bar to do the grand battement. There's a rule about how you deal with a bar with one hand on it. First off, you don't want to be too close so that you have a tense shoulder and a weird looking bar arm. Here's my best way to describe your relationship to the bar. You're a forearm away. So, here I am. You might have a back of your chair. You have your forearm, and then your hand goes a foot forward. So it's resting, hopefully, on top of the bar, the fingertips. This exercise we are going to do in parallel. Yes? The arm will go up, to the on O position. Notice the relationship of my hand to my forehead. My index finger is in front of the forehead. Be careful when you're doing this position that you don't let the hands go over your head. The important thing I'd like to say just before we do it is in intro to ballet, I don't concentrate on the height that you're doing as your teacher I'm actually concentrating on the strength of the leg you're standing on so that it doesn't buckle. So what we'll do is we have five, six, seven, eight on our intro, and we do to the front, hold, lift, touch, lower, and in. And we go tondu, and lift, light, touch, hold it, and in. And we do four of them. Then we're going to do a rise. Up. Notice my little test. Woo. Exciting. Lower down. Here. And to finish. So let's give it a try. And.
and are relevant. Our little test. Slowly lower the heel. Arm down the front, both arms on back. And now let's get ready for the second side. Remember that forearm away from your bar, hand in front. And. Remember, I'm, you should be thinking of that standing leg of strength. Now rise up. Those toes are spreading out. Test. Lower gently. Arm down the front. Bar arm meets it. So that was your ballet bar component. So this part of the class is normally known as the center work. So we've done our bar work, and now we're away from our bar. And I'd like to go over, because it's intro to ballet, some of the basic arm positions. Yes? So we have something called demi second palms down. Notice my hands are at waist height. If you need an even better reference point, you put them in front, Index finger should be opposite your navel, so know where thy navel is, hopefully. Then open it up. Then we're going to do V-line. Beautiful wrist just above the head. Be careful you're not going to be a Dallas cheerleader. Yes. <laughs> nice V-line. Then we'll go back to the beautiful en bas. Yes, palms talking to each other. Then, that other reference point of the navel is my baby finger is now at the navel. And this is called en avant. Then we have en out. And in this position, you're trying to create the image of a cameo brooch, an antique cameo brooch with a gorgeous oval feeling. And you notice with Nicole, if the bottom of the cameo, as I said, is at the sternum, you have the height, you have the height. And remind yourself, in terms of your shoulder movement, if you feel strain, keep the arms here during the exercise. Yes? A good en avant is always a good thing. So, so our little exercise has one little other element. We're going to do one arm at a time at the beginning to the demi-second. And then we're going to do the demi-second, the vina. Then we do the beautiful en bas. We come here. Here's the on up. Then we come down. Then we do left arm, demi-second. Right arm to V. Look towards it. We shift to our left foot. Our right leg goes out to side. In. And we're here. And then we repeat other side. So, in our first position, or again, you can match Nicole with parallel. Dancer's choice. And. So your arm goes to waist. In. Your other arm. Waist height.
both arms, demi second. Beautiful V. Slight lift of your chin. And en bas. To the en avant. To the en haut, or you can keep your arms en avant like your cold. Down. One arm to waist height. Our other arm to V. Shift opposite that high arm. Same arm as leg out. And one arm again. Other arm. Shift away from that lifted arm. Same arm, leg is lifted. Finish. So our final thing in our intro to ballet. I try to make sure that people start to learn to balance on one leg. And there are many health benefits attached to it. Yes? So. It's exciting. And like the Grand Batman that we did at the bar, I'd be looking just as much as your standing leg as the leg that you I'm going to ask you to lift. So, uh, we start with the lovely en bas, and we're in parallel. We put the arms to the en avant. Then we lift one foot, heel up. Then we point the toe and it attaches to the side of my ankle. I hold it for a moment, just come down, and then arms down, little breath arm, and come in. Then we repeat, arm, heel, other foot, lift. We stay for a moment. We put the foot down, arms on back, here, breath on, and in. So, let's give it a try. Good luck. And. Arms to the on the ball. Heel. Point those toes. Stay. Foot down, arms down, waist height, en bas. Heel up, then the toes. Foot down, arms. Let's try it again. One. By the ankle. Stay. Down. Other foot. And point. what? I think we should try one more. So, I'm calling this the juicy joint exercise. And I'm going to make you do it in another position of ballet called second position. Notice, here's my hip base. 
and my heels are just outside my hip base. And again, I'm using those deep outer rotators I talked about right at the beginning of class. And when we plie those kneecaps, again, go right over the second toe joint. The interesting thing is you could also do this exercise in a lovely parallel if you wanted to. Yes? And it's just to make some energy connection from joint to joint to joint. Yes? And you want to almost be playful with it versus grind it out. That's why I call it the juicy joints. So, in our demi second, arms and second position, we do one, two, three, four. Just push the floor away. One, two, three, four. Push the floor away. Then one, two, three, four. Push the floor away. Little lift of the heels to lower. Notice not very high. Arms in, arms back out. And then we repeat again. Exact same thing. So let's give it a shot. Lovely second position. demi second arms. And. Push that floor away. Duck. Push. Juicy joints. A little heel. Arms in. Arms back out. Juicy joints again. So, finishing off our class, we normally do something called reverence, which is an acknowledgement to all of the energy that's in the studio during the class. So, we'll be in parallel. You'll take an arm to your heart. You give it to the audience. You bring it down, up to the knee, overturn the hand down the front, little nod of the head. There you are. Other arm, here. Out you go. Drop it, up, and down. So, here we go. And. A hand to the heart. Down. To the right. Up and. And. Bow the head. Other side, hand, arm, down, arm, palm up, bow that head. I hope you really enjoyed your intro to ballet experience. I'm so fortunate to be asked to be your teacher today. And a great thank you to Nicole and to Bob. Have a great day. Bye-bye for now. And that concludes our class today. Thank you everyone for joining us. Uh, special thanks to Canada's National Ballet School Specifically, we want to also thank Dr. Caitlin MacArthur, Dr. Rachel Barr, and Ballet Bob and his team. 
It was a great class. If you're looking for more information on bone health and osteoporosis, please visit us at osteoporosis.ca. Thanks everyone and have a great day.